All right, so now let's move to the next module, that is the step module. So in the step module, again, we are going to click on the first icon over here, that is create step. So if I click on that, so I need to define a step. Now, of course, as we mentioned, by default, this is the only thing that is has been generated by default and you cannot change it. This is the initiation uh, step that's called initial. So right now, this the new step that we are going to create, as Abacus is telling you here, this will be inserted as a new step after the initial one. Okay, so if the initial one, it always has to be there. Uh, and then uh, you will need to select the procedure type or the analysis type. So there are different types of analysis, as you see here, uh, coupled thermal electrical analysis, dynamic analysis, different types of dynamic analysis with implicit and explicit solvers, static RICS analysis, heat transfers, okay, many, many types of analysis. So the one that we're going to use here for our tutorial is pretty much the basic type of analysis and that the one that most of us use in structural engineering that is static general so i'm going to select static general and i'm going to give a name for my step so in my model i'm going to create just a single step this is where i'm going to apply my loads so i will call it loading step all right you can call it whatever you want of course and then i click continue so now I have another dialog. I need now to define the properties of this step. So first of all, I can provide a description if you want. It's always recommended that you provide a description of your, of your uh, step. So here I call it a step for applying the column axial load and the beam and displacement, all right? Then you need to provide a time period. So everything here with respect to the analysis in Abacus uh, is done with respect to uh, a time vector. The time, of course, is in seconds. So here you need to provide a time period. Uh, as far as we are concerned here, this is a static analysis. So time is really doesn't matter because we don't have anything dependent on time. We don't have dynamic effects or inertia effects or thermal effects or anything that is a function of time so this is just a reference value in that case so right now by default it's one second so i will keep it as it is as one second but really physically uh, in static analysis this doesn't mean anything so i'll keep it one next thing uh, you have the uh, nonlinear geometry so do you want to consider nonlinear geometry or not so this is pretty much the nonlinear effects of large displacements. If you are expecting nonlinear geometry in your model, then you need to activate that, you make it on, and this means that you are going to consider all the geometric effects uh, and the equilibrium of your problem will be considering the deformed shapes of your mesh elements and so on. So in our case, yeah, we're expecting uh, deformations, it's a nonlinear problem. So I will select nonlinear geometry to be on. You have here automatic stabilization. Right now it's none, but typically if you have a problem that has some issues with conversions, and this sometimes happen, uh, so you can select one of those options to stabilize your model. For now, I don't need that, but these are all things that you can again check and perhaps we can go through uh, later on uh, in more advanced uh, tutorials. Uh, then if I go to the incrementation, so this is very, very important. So increments, so right now I have one second. So let me now uh, go here and then uh, let me clear over here. So now everything will be done with respect to time. So I have an axis and this is time T. And uh, time will start at time zero for the analysis and for everything. And as we mentioned, we have the step time, which we specify to be one, but it could be any number, it doesn't matter, but we specify this to be one, right? So now the question is, uh, if you are going to apply something, okay, uh, Abacus is going to move using incremental time steps until it reaches the end of the step time. 
So you need to specify the time increments. So you have time increments. All right. So Abacus will do that. So there are a couple of things that you need to define. You need to define to tell Abacus what is the maximum time increment. So that's delta T max. So this is the maximum time increment that Abacus can go for, all right? Because perhaps you don't want to make this delta T max very large because you could finish your entire loading in one step. And in this case, uh, like let's say in our uh, problem over here, we are applying monotonic displacement at the edge. So if you apply this monotonic displacement in one second, and you take an increment of one second, then you are going, your output, your results will be just one increment. So you will just see one output point. But of course you don't want that. So you want to break this into a smaller increment. So you need to specify delta T max. You also need to specify delta T uh, initial, the initial time step. And you need to specify what would be the smallest a time increment because sometimes ideally abacus will start with the initial time increment and then if there is no problem in conversions then abacus will increase the time increment to become the maximum time increment but then if abacus is experiencing problems with linearity then in order to satisfy the convergence criteria in the abacus solver the time increment will be smaller so you need to specify also what is the minimum time increment that Abacus can go for. And then if it gets less than that, then Abacus will abort, will say, okay, I cannot solve this problem because there is a convergence issue. So now if we go back, so here you go. So for the initial one, uh, we have, as we said, the maximum, uh, the, the total time step is one second. So perhaps the maximum time increment could be 0.1. So this means that if everything is good in our my model, there is no problems, at least I'm going to get 10 points, okay? Because I have a maximum time increment of 0.1. Uh, for the initial, it's always good to start with a small uh, initial uh, time increment, all right? Or if you don't want, you can just stay, uh, you start the initial time increment with uh, 0.1 as well, similar to the max. But let's say here for them, just for, the matter of like um, for the sake of uh, illustrating things let's start with uh, an initial uh, one that's uh, like one over hundred and then this is the minimum how small can the increment go you can put whatever uh, value typically i put like one e to the negative uh, 15 all right just to give the solver a chance to reach very very small increments to try to pass any problems with conversions and here with the maximum number of increments, how many increments for the entire analysis? Well, just put a very large number because we don't want the program to stop because of that. Unless of course you are worried about your program getting into, or your solver getting into uh, an endless loop that you need to break it. So you can put a limit for this maximum number of increments. So I mean, typically for our type of analysis, I mean, you will not, exceed like 100 or 1000 in general. So you can put like 10,000, which is like more than enough. For others, this is like additional control that you can do with the solver itself. So the way the solver works, all right? A Newton, Raphson, what kind of uh, extrapolations between steps, how to deal with discontinuities and iterations. So this we typically, uh, I leave uh, by default but again it's very important to understand what those means because perhaps some of these uh, advanced options can be useful for your case um, you can also specify here things like you can stop uh, the analysis if a specific region in the model reaches the plastic level or something like that you don't need to go beyond this point so there are many things that you can do here of course it uh, it helps if you have taken any courses with respect to numerical methods, you would have learned about many of these uh, solution techniques 
uh, or if you take in a finite element method class. So I will leave it as it is and then I will click OK, I'm done. So now if I go back to the manager, you will see here my initial step. So this is the default. I cannot do anything with it. I cannot delete it. OK, so this is always there. This is the initialization step. And then I have my original step that I just defined, a static general step with nonlinear geometry and a time of one second. And again, in the model tree over here, you can see here under steps, you can access the step over here. All right, uh, so now in the next video, now we're done with the step. Uh, in the next video, we are going to discuss uh, again, modifying the step and modifying what kind of uh, results do we want to save during this step. So see you in the next video.